Hi guys, my name is Dr. Zero Miller and welcome to my channel. This is the Hazmat training video series. This is actually the fourth installment of the video series. So if you want to check out the other three videos, you can go to youtube.com slash zero Miller and each of the videos that features the hazardous materials training has the has map or hazardous materials tag in their name so it's very easy to find also I included it in a playlist hazardous materials you can search for that in YouTube search in the future I'll be showing you the science behind all of these interventions against the threats of hazardous materials so stay tuned by clicking on the subscribe button below if you haven't done so so here's day five of the hazardous materials training series swiss firefighter john mark voucher started the day with a chemistry demonstration to show us how we can handle chemical intervention okay this is john mark voucher what are we cooking today <laughs> What's for breakfast? <laughs> As you can see here, Jean-Marc is creating a makeshift flask out of used bottles. To the left of the video, you can see very strong acids and bases on containers. To the right, you can see micro pipettes and a makeshift bottle spray of water for protection. The bottle is picking up a liquefied hexane. He is pouring the gas inside another container to show us that even though the chemical is transparent, it's actually there and it's very, very flammable. He then transfers the gas to another bottle the gas is actually very heavier than the air and then he picks up a lighter and ignites the first container which contains no more gas and then the second container to show that it has flammable hexane in it. That is the common problem with chemical emergencies. The chemical that is usually involved are colorless, odorless and very very toxic and sometimes also very flammable so this is very important for first responders to be very careful in handling chemical emergencies since their very lives may depend on I, I resume this is a summary of six months of reaction normal by accelerate This is vapor, water vapor or oxygen. We have about 100 degrees in Stanton. This is in Timpanius. We have production of vapor. If you are in a closed container, the container may explode with the pressure. It's not close to That was Sir Jean-Marc demonstrating that even chemicals kept in closed containers may actually explode. That chemical used in this demonstration is hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide in time will develop water vapor inside the containers and if it does not leak out, pressure can build up and it then the container may explode like a volcano. After one or two minutes, we have a strong reaction. The temperature, temperature increase up to 100 degrees. This sodium hydroxide is very, very dangerous for eggs. If you have a drop in your eggs, in five seconds you have 
irreversible damage. You walk in a few seconds. Take one or two minutes more. And that was Jean Marc showing us how caustic soda can melt even strong metal. This is also the reason why he warns us, the first responders, not to go into a chemical emergency scene with our electronics because we ran the risk of messing it up, destroying it, or being melted away if chemicals can be found in the air especially if it is if the same grade of corrosive as caustic soda second part of the day we went to the naval magazine inside Subic Bay which is way deep in the jungles of Morong Bataan in here we bought all our personal protective equipment, the chem suit provided to us by the Swiss fire department, and also all of the breathing apparatuses to be used in the drills. In this scenario, we have a chemical laboratory explosion where impossible victims are to be found inside. There is a possibility that any chemical can be involved. We applied the same principles that are found in the previous videos wherein we set up a SAS for the entry and exit points in the area and also we set up a perimeter so that there is a hot zone and a cold zone. Only two firefighters with chemical suits are allowed inside and they had with them special equipment like pH paper, Geiger counters, and chemical counters that detect chemicals in the air. You can see here that the two firefighters came out to brief the incident command of what they have found inside the hot zone. They have to describe what they found inside because they, the incident command has to recruit specialists so that they have to know how to counter the chemical threat that is found inside the exploded laboratory. Safety of all of the first responders are important. So it is emphasized here by the use of the breathing apparatuses and also the distance at which they are talking to each other. It is actually hot inside the chemical suits. So Incident Command always checks in every 10 minutes about the well-being of the firemen wearing the chem suit. We also have to be kept in mind that this drill actually involves live chemicals. The chemical that was identified was ammonium chloride and before the responders were to exit the hot zone, they really have to be washed first head to foot and all of their equipment has to be dried out before going back to headquarters. I was not allowed to film most of the drill because of the involvement of live chemicals that can destroy my camera. I was only able to take a few shots uh, in the end wherein what you saw was a mopping up procedure. The very first principle that is concerned with handling chemical emergencies is first taking note of wind direction. The location of the SAS, the ICP, the staging areas and the advanced medical posts will depend on the wind direction because you would want to place those things away from the wind you would want also to employ a snatch rescue procedure 
to extract any possible victims from a chemical explosion so that if the victims were exposed to the chemicals he can regain consciousness as soon as possible when he is introduced to fresh air the next step is to identify the offending chemical involved you can ask any of the survivors or anybody who has knowledge of what chemicals may be involved in that area of the incident if there is nobody to interrogate regarding first-hand knowledge on the incident you have to go inside the hot zone to look for labels or clues like what is that offending agent what form whether it be a liquid a gas or a powder or and what possible intervention you can employ to prevent further spread in the area always keep in mind the safety of the rescuers so the chem suits and the breathing apparatuses are standard in these operations it is always wise to seek the help of a specialist especially a chemist or a petrol technician whenever you are involved with chemicals as our instructor Jean-Marc Voucher puts it you may know some chemistry but you may not know all of the chemistry so always seek the help of technicians in cases wherein uh, chemists cannot be employed uh, easily during the first few moments of a chemical disaster the first responders may be able to use a guide called the emergency response guidebook or the ERG 2012 which is freely downloadable in the internet or in the iTunes app store once all the victims are safe you can now start the decontamination procedures which can take as long as you want and that's it for the hazma training video series although i did promise you guys that i'll be showing you some firefighting videos i ha i had to forego with it in this episode and put it on the next video because that is part of the day six of the hazma training series so be sure to stay tuned for that and keep yourself subscribed also you can be updated when i come out with uh, new videos by following me on facebook at facebook.com slash zero million and also on twitter at twitter.com slash zero md if you have questions or concerns regarding the hazardous materials training you can write them on the comment section below and that's it for today i'm dr zero melia thank you very much for watching and babuhai